Homelessness in California is at a crisis point, and the problem is about to get a lot worse. I'll tell you why California politicians' current proposals are destined to fail and what we really need to do to clean up the filth from our streets. I'm Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California, and there is absolutely no doubt about it, California's homeless crisis is getting worse. And some would say, and I believe this, it's all by design. California's liberal politicians and activists are trying to force a crisis to advance a very bizarre and extreme plan that they have for the role of government. Uh, in our lives. I'll get to that in just a moment. I I do want you to understand that there is no simple solution to homelessness. And frankly, we will probably never end homelessness in society. However, we do need to understand that in California, we're doing things completely the wrong way. Uh, And that's why when you take a look at the numbers I'm about to share, you'll see that homelessness is actually getting better around the country, but much, much worse uh, in California. At the end of this segment, you're going to also uh, learn about a plan that Reform California has uh, outlined to solve homelessness, address homelessness in California, and how we need your help in the upcoming 2024 elections to advance that plan. So let's get started. Um, the, The problem of homelessness really has to be looked at in two ways, nationwide to see what trends are happening, as well as what's happening in California. And if we see a major difference then we really can ask the question, why? What's happening in the rest of the country that's not happening here in California? What are the different policies uh, so that we can figure out what we need to do to change uh, political approaches to dealing with this problem? The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, the federal government agency that oversees homelessness as an issue, publishes each year an assessment on uh, the homeless population in every state. So I'm going to be quoting some numbers from the 2022 report, which is the most recent report we have. And what you find is that homelessness is actually down nationwide by roughly 10%. Homelessness is down nationwide by roughly 10%. But if you look at California, it's up by 31.6% between 2007 and 2022. In San Francisco, Los Angeles, and in San Diego, these urban areas have seen their homeless population increase by triple digits since 2007. And so while nationally the population of homeless people has been going down, California's population has skyrocketed. Now, when you take a look at California, it represents about 12% of the total population of the United States, but it is responsible for a third of the homeless population of the U.S., 171,000 homeless individuals versus 582,000 homeless individuals. And by the way, the 171,000 and 582,000 numbers are from the point in time survey that's held uh, each year across the country. Um, Some estimates put California's homeless population at anywhere between 300 and 400,000 people a year. Uh, California has the highest rate of homelessness per 10,000 people in the state. We have 44 people who are homeless out of every 10,000 people living in our state. Uh, we also have the highest rate of unsheltered homeless because homelessness is really broken down into two categories, people living in shelters and people who are living on the streets. So the unsheltered rate for California is 67.3%. Again, the worst in the nation. Now, this is despite the fact that California has been throwing more and more and more of your taxpayer money at the problem of homelessness. So people can't claim we need more money for homelessness because California has spiked its its expenditures on homelessness. In the 2018 budget, $515 million was put in for homelessness. We are now at $4.6 billion in the 2022 budget. We have spent more than $20 billion on homeless programs since 2018 alone. No state is spending as much as California is spending on the homeless problem, and yet our problem is getting worse in contrast to the rest of the United States. So that would lead us to uh, examine what is different about California. What policies are we pursuing that are different than the rest of the country? And I'll get to that in just a moment. To understand, though, why the policies that we're pursuing in California are so wrong and are actually exacerbating the homeless problem, we have to look at the root causes of homelessness. 
Now, the folks on the left over the years have come up with a number of uh, reasons why they, they think people are homeless. Uh, the, the one I hear about the most is that Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan, uh, they deinstitutionalized people who were in mental hospitals. And all the people on the street are basically people that Reagan and Nixon released. Okay, uh, you do realize Reagan and Nixon, uh, Governor Ronald Reagan was in the 1960s. Uh, Nixon was president in the 1970s. 60s and 70s, people being released all the way back then, those people are not living anymore. So uh, if anything, whenever a, a person from the left says it's all about deinstitutionalization, they're actually secretly revealing something I'm going to talk about in just a minute, the root cause of homelessness. Um, but no, it's not deinstitutionalization. Uh, they also will point to the fact that, well, people need job skills. We need to uh, get them jobs. Homelessness has increased despite unemployment going down. And we're, you know, for the past several years in California, the unemployment rate has been so low that employers have been saying they're begging people to take jobs. So it's not a lack of jobs. And a lot of the jobs are entry-level jobs um, that are available. And when you look at people on the, uh, on the streets, when you actually analyze individual homeless individuals, you'll find that they have a, a number of skill sets. Many of them are quite accomplished, have had very impressive careers, but here they are no longer able to care for themselves. So it's not job training. Uh, and then, of course, I love this one, that it's the housing costs. And there's no doubt California housing costs are out of control. But our homelessness problem has been steadily increasing, uh, even in years where housing costs are flat or even declining. And of course, we've seen housing costs go up in other states around the country, and yet their homeless populations also have declined during that same period of time. So don't fall for the kind of gut explanations for why people are homeless. There are actually two categories of homeless individuals. Uh, one I, I characterize as the economically displaced, and the other I will call dysfunctional. These are people who are not just economically unable to care for themselves and, and afford rent. These are people who simply are dysfunctional. I want to deal with the economically displaced individuals first, because those are individuals that um, we actually do have a number of programs that are available and are working quite well for. Uh, economically displaced homeless individuals are people who tend to cycle on and off the streets very quickly. Uh, these are people who, by definition, uh, for, for whatever reason, cannot afford a, 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 a housing unit uh, for that month. Some of them are spouses fleeing an abusive uh, uh, spouse or, or partner because of domestic violence. So they finally give up, they, they leave uh, their abuser, and so they don't have a place to go. They don't have the first month's rent. It'll take some time for them to find a spot. Um, others are runaway youth who are abused at home. Um, others are simply people who have fallen behind on their bills. Many of them actually have cars. They actually have jobs. Many of the people who are economically displaced do have jobs. And so these are individuals that tend to be able to get off the streets relatively quickly. Nothing about them uh, individually is damaged uh, such that they're not able to care for themselves. They've just fallen uh, down on their luck. Um, the dysfunctional homeless are really the main drivers of what we're seeing on the street. They're also known as chronically homeless because people who are dysfunctional stay on the street um, long term. Uh, and when you take a look at the, the percentages, it varies, but about two thirds to three quarters of the homeless population are dysfunctional. Only about a third to one quarter of the population are the economically displaced. And so we're really looking at a failure to deal with the dysfunctional population. The programs are not working to break their cycle uh, of dysfunction. Now, what's the real driver of dysfunction? Well, think about it. These are people who have skills, they've had jobs in the past, but for whatever reason, they cannot hold a job. So therefore, they cannot earn money. And so therefore, because they don't have money, they cannot afford uh, any sort of housing. And that it's chronic. It's not something where, hey, they're down on their luck. They just got to catch up on, on their bills. They got to find a place uh, to land. No, these are people who are chronically homeless because they absolutely cannot get jobs. They cannot hold a job. And the real drivers there, all of the literature, all the surveys, all of the data shows it is mental health and substance abuse as the main drivers of 
the uh, dysfunctional, chronic, homeless individuals. There was a, a, a study uh, in um, 2022 by Stanford University on California homelessness. And I want to share uh, this passage uh, with you because it, it highlights a few things. The left has been trying to um, d- uh, basically mislead people uh, on the notion of substance abuse and mental health being major drivers. Uh, they do not want people to think that that's the real reason. In fact, whenever you say homelessness is a mental health issue, homelessness is a broken person issue, uh, a substance abuse issue, the folks from the left come right out of the woodwork and they start screaming and yell- yelling on social media <clears throat> that it's not true, that it's really the price of housing. <clears throat> More on that in a minute. Uh, I'll explain why, because they have an agenda. And that's what this has all been always about. California's failed policies on homelessness has been about a specific political agenda that they've been trying to drive. They don't want you to know about substance abuse and mental health as the main drivers. And so even our government data sets will diminish and minimize mental health and substance abuse amongst the chronically homeless as a major factor. For example, in 2019, the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority put out data showing that 25% of unsheltered homeless had severe mental illness or 14% had a a substance abuse disorder. Uh, But the LA Times did a different analysis of the same data and showed that the numbers were actually 51% with mental illness and 46% with substance abuse. Now, when the LA Times, as left-wing as it is and as narrative-driving as it has been, comes out and says that your numbers are uh, minimizing uh, this issue of substance abuse and mental health, you know that is a much worse problem. In fact, um, another study, uh, this is from Kuhn and Kulhane from 1998, showed that 75% of chronic homeless have a substance abuse or severe mental illness. These are broken people. It's not going to be easy to fix broken people. And we'll talk in a moment about our only chance to address this issue with a different plan. But let me tell you what California has done. California in the early 2000s, and in particular 2007, 8, and 9, shifted its entire homeless approach to a policy called housing first. Now, this is a philosophy, uh, some would say a fetish, (laughs) that the left-wing homeless uh, advocates in this country devised in the 1990s. And they were peddling it around state by state, and nobody wanted uh, to implement it because it really doesn't seem to make sense. But they they found California politicians were left-wing enough uh, to take them up on on their offer. And so in California, we shifted to something called housing first. It says that we should just simply give a housing unit and not just a, a, a bed at a shelter, but an actual apartment, a housing unit to homeless people and ask for them to do nothing in return. Just give them the keys. Uh, obviously, uh, they will throw in that we will let them know that there are substance abuse and mental health programs available that they can take advantage of if they so choose, but there are no strings attached to these housing units. There are no requirements. There's no accountability. What the left-wing advocates said is that if you give people housing supported by government, that it will stabilize them so that they can get a hold of their mental health or substance abuse issues. Well, the data shows that's not actually happening. In fact, Rosenheck and uh, Mary's Greenberg uh, Steropoulos in 2003, 2007, and 2010, sorry I butchered those uh, research names, analyzed Housing First programs. And let me quote, Housing First showed no effects in reducing drug use, alcohol consumption, psychiatric symptoms, or enhancing the quality of life. Those are a multitude of studies showing that the Housing First approach fails to get to the root cause of stabilizing these dysfunctional people. Now think about it. People with mental health problems and substance abuse problems probably had those issues uh, flare up while they were living at home with family. And year after year, they continued to get worse, and their family, through the power of love, could not get them to break their, their, their dependency habit. Their family could not get them to take the psychiatric medicine or go into counseling. The power of love could not get these individuals to deal with these underlying problems. And so in most cases, you'll find that the homeless people on the street have been kicked out of their homes. They've left their home. The relationships have uh, been severed. They have family. 
but they're no longer wanted or uh, they can't go back to that location because the power of love could not get them to change their behavior. Housing first removes any impetus, any push to get these individuals into the treatment they need to break the cycle. So in California, we implemented housing first uh, because the left wing pushed it through politicians and they also pushed it through lawsuits. The ACLU shamefully filed suit in a number of cities in California saying, we don't want you to enforce the law. You're not allowed to uh, have police and sheriff deputies enforce the law against homeless people. Homelessness uh, is, is a human right. It's, you, have, you, have, you have a human right to sit on the sidewalk. Uh, shamefully, some of the uh, lawyers in California, or sorry, judges in California, uh, agreed with this uh, concept and have tied the hands of local um, policymakers. But at the state level, it's gotten even worse because Housing First has now been adopted as the official policy of California homeless service providers. In fact, in California, we bar any homeless service agency, any nonprofit, any shelter that requires that an individual abide by rules regarding substance abuse and mental health treatment, um, that shelter, that provider is no longer eligible for any government money. That's how bad this has be become. Housing First is now cutting off money from programs that want to require substance abuse and mental health treatment for these people who are chronically homeless. Now, let me tell you how Housing First is actually a, a scam. Housing First is actually part of the philosophy that the left has had in this country, that government ought to provide a, a range of welfare guarantees for every citizen. That's also called socialism, okay? Now remember, the left has said that everyone deserves government-run health care, that government should be providing health care to all. They just got that implemented with Obamacare, and they're all giddy about it, and it's not working. Um, they've also been coming out saying that government ought to provide housing to everyone. In fact, there's a whole movement afoot that left-wing activists are getting city councils across California, and they want the legislature also to put this in the Constitution, declaring housing a human right in California. And therefore, there would be some legal um, requirement that local government, state government would provide then a guaranteed housing unit to everyone in California. Does this sound like housing first? Yeah, it's housing first. See, with housing first and homelessness, the left wants to create or use, I would argue they're creating because their policies are failing, but they're using the homeless problem to basically get government more and more involved in providing guaranteed housing to every individual in society. We can have a debate about whether that is right or wrong. I believe it's wrong, but it's a debate that we're not even being allowed to have because basically they're disguising it as a homeless program statewide rather than should government give a guaranteed taxpayer-funded housing unit to every individual in society. Take a look at this um, uh, graph, and it shows in homelessness, we have actually slightly increased our housing or emergency shelter beds. That's because the problem has gotten so much uh, worse. But what we've eliminated or reduced is transitional housing units. These are where you put someone while they're going through drug treatment, while they're going through mental health therapy. You put someone in there, uh, it's it's a condition that they have to complete their therapy, but we give them a housing unit to stabilize them. Transitional housing is actually declining in California. This is absolutely astounding. What is increasing? What they call permanent housing, supportive housing, basically government-run permanent housing units. We are putting taxpayers on the hook to basically write the check every single month provide the housing for these individuals without actually getting to the root cause of why are they not able to care for themselves. That is what Housing First is as a philosophy, as a policy. Very expensive. And that's why you're seeing $20 billion since 2018 being spent on homelessness. And all of it is going to housing projects, not the sort of transitional services, shelter beds, and uh, uh, treatment that is desperately needed. There's another reason why the Democrat politicians are pursuing housing first, and it has to do with politics. Take a look at some of these uh, uh, figures. $5,000 for each tent in San Francisco. This would be a tent for homeless people, $5,000. Do you think there's some grift or corruption or fraud going on there? You bet. How about this? $43,000 or $75,000 
for a single shelter bed. You think there's a little bit of inefficiency there? A little bit of corruption, kickbacks? Or this, $5,500 to $6,500 per month for taxpayer-funded housing vouchers that they're giving to homeless people, and they take these to local motels and live at the motel. Basically, uh, Democrat politicians have turned your, your, your dive motel down the street into a homeless shelter without informing the public, without a public vote, without any sort of oversight. Those housing vouchers are costing about $5,500 to $6,500 per month per person. And then finally, this, these affordable housing projects, these are uh, actual building projects that government is funding with your taxpayer money. We're talking affordable units priced at $600,000, $700,000, $800,000 per unit, even a million dollars per unit. I was talking to a, a developer recently, and he said, yeah, all my uh, Democrat developer friends are uh, getting bunch of a bunch of money uh, for these housing first government subsidized affordable housing projects. So I decided if you can't beat them, join them. I, I hired a consultant. We put together a project and I figured I'd get a little bit of the grant money. And he said that in his project, he was able to build affordable housing, even in California, for $250,000 a unit. His consultant told him, no, charge them $700,000. They'll laugh you out of the room if you come in with a project that is this low. And my developer friend said, uh, I don't need more than 250 per unit. I'm very efficient. I can make a profit with 250 per unit. And this is becoming now what I call the homeless industrial complex, where there's a whole gaggle of consultants and private interests uh, who are making money on failure. They're making money on the corrupt, failed approach of housing first. Oh, and by the way, those housing developers are all Democrats. And they give massive campaign contributions, you guessed it, to Democrat politicians. Oh, and when these units are built, the affordable housing projects, the government subsidized projects, they require that only union contractors be used on the pro project site. Project labor agreements are required for all these projects because taxpayer money is funding the project. So therefore, there's a kickback. For the labor unions. And who do the labor unions give campaign contributions to? You guessed it, Democrat politicians. Here's the thing if you actually spent money to break someone's cycle of substance abuse and their, you know, get their mental health stabilized and get them into a job and get them into their own apartment where they're independent now, that person's not going to give a campaign contribution to a politician. They're basically going to go about their life, thankfully. But if you actually build a unit, a housing unit, or give a government contract, you got yourself a campaign contributor who now is on the hook, on the dole, and will expect even more taxpayer money, so keep it flowing. This is the real issue here. Housing First is about a political agenda that the left has that somehow we ought to give housing, government subsidized housing to everyone, starting with the homeless, and then you just simply expand from there. But it's also about the campaign contributions that the people benefiting from this failed policy are shelling out. As a result, California has gotten a reputation around the country for being weak or permissive on the issue of homelessness. And so the word has spread around the country, go to California. Uh, my friend Michael Schellenberger, who's an advocate for changes in homelessness policy, released a video a few years ago, about a year and a half ago, that went viral, where a homeless individual literally confirmed that they get a lot of money for being on the street and that it, everyone knows, come to California because they give you free handouts. Listen to a clip. To be homeless, it's pretty easy here. I mean, if we're gonna be realistic, they pay you to be homeless here. This right now is, is literally by choice. Literally by choice. Like, why would I wanna pay rent? I'm not doing I got a cell phone that I have Amazon Prime and Netflix on. Now, it's like the cops are, it's like they're your neighbor, you know? It's just absolutely crazy. We've got homeless programs that are not working in California, while at the same time across the country, as we just showed, a 10% reduction since 2007 in homeless, homelessness. Those other states are clearly implementing proven 
solutions. So why not just copy those other states? Or even better, here in California, we actually have privately funded homeless programs that don't get any government money because, again, as I mentioned earlier, the government money in California comes with strings attached. These privately funded homeless programs are producing spectacular results here in San Diego County, where I live. Solutions for Change and the East County Transitional Living Center are two model programs. They don't get any government money, but they are saving lives. They're getting people off the street. Why? They require that in exchange for the housing, that the individuals are cl clean, sane, and sober. They have to do the mental health and substance abuse programs as a condition for the charity and the compassion. There are accountability rules. In fact, at East County Transitional Living Center, 85% of the cost of each homeless individual's uh, program expenses are paid for by the homeless individual because the East County Transitional Living Center hires homeless people out to local employers to do work. And a portion of their earnings are, are held back to pay for the costs of the program. A portion of the earnings are given to the homeless individual and the rest is put into a bank account, a savings account for that homeless individual to then have savings for their first month's uh, rent on their own unit once they graduate from the program. An 85% funding model provided by the homeless individuals themselves. Look, we can solve homelessness in California, but it requires that we abandon the failed uh, policy of housing first. It, again, it sounds good, but it's rotten to the core. We need to go with a people's first plan. If you go to our website uh, at Reform California dedicated to homelessness, cleanupourstreets.org, that's cleanupourstreets.org, you will find our People First plan laid out in summary. And, and this is important that you share this plan and sign up uh, as a, a supporter of the plan because we really want to see the People First plan implemented throughout the entire state in the upcoming election. The People First plan has a few components. Number one, we are going to guarantee every, guarantee every homeless person a clean, safe, warm bed every night. Now, it's not going to be a government-subsidized apartment, government-run apartment. It is going to be a cot. It's going to be a bunk bed. Look, if it's good enough for the U.S. Uh, military, it should be good enough for someone who's homeless. For units, uh, any units that we do have, apartment units that we have, would be reserved for uh, homeless families. Because there are some homeless families. Again, these tend to be the economically displaced. But there is a way for us to take and guarantee that every family, every individual has a clean, warm place to spend every night. We'll also provide them with uh, a variety of other support, three meals a day, but we need to be able to guarantee that they will have shelter. And we have the money in California. Look at all the money we're spending each year to do this. Again, it's not going to be the $900,000 per unit um, uh, built project. It's not going to be $5,500 per month at a motel, but it will be military style. Um, accommodations for every homeless individual. We cannot allow people to be on the street. That's the second part, that we would require that law enforcement be able to enforce the laws and, 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 and take someone to the shelter, if necessary, uh, arrest them for any crimes that they've committed, trespassing, loitering, uh, drug use, vandalism. We need to start enforcing the law because the power of love could not get these individuals to break their habits. The power of law must be brought into the equation. This is what Rudy Giuliani did very effectively in the 1990s to clean up the streets in New York. If you study uh, the New York uh, miracle, you'll find that Giuliani's administration partnered with judges in the courts locally to use the stick of law enforcement to get people into treatment. So law enforcement has to be part of it. Third, treatment. We must guarantee uh, that every individual needing substance abuse and mental health treatment receive that treatment, and we must fully fund those programs. Again, we have the money to do this because you're not spending a million dollars per unit on these government projects. And finally, we need to put people back to work. In order uh, for us to say that we're going to um, uh, put up the money by the taxpayers to support you, uh, to provide you with these treatments, uh, we want to have a work detail every day. And it also gets people in the habit of uh, doing work and getting back into society. This is the people first plan on homelessness because you have to deal with homelessness on an individual by individual basis. It's not going to be easy, but it's the only effective way to solve the problem. So how do we execute this? Well, the Democrats, California politicians are putting their failed housing first program on the ballot in 2024. 
they have something uh, on the March ballot called ACA2, which would allow uh, Section 8 government subsidized housing projects to be placed in any neighborhood without a vote of the people. Currently, there is a requirement of a public vote for any government projects. Not anymore if ACA2 passes. We're opposing ACA2, and we want to defeat it in March 2024. They're also putting a housing bond and another amendment to our mental health program uh, funding uh, system on the ballot in March of 2024, and that would only uh, yield more money for the failed Housing First projects. So we're opposing those moves as well. In other words, no more money for a broken system. We also are going to oppose housing tax hikes, uh, housing uh, homelessness tax hikes at the local level. A number of communities, including Los Angeles, have had a number of failed um, um, experiments with raising taxes, throwing money at these problems, and only having their homeless problem worsen under Housing First. And finally, we need to elect sheriffs, district attorneys, assembly members, state senators, mayors, and city council members across the state who will make the People First plan their solution on homelessness. And so in this upcoming election, the Reform California Voter Guide will be surveying every candidate for elected office and getting them to commit to our plan and being um, held accountable for um, pushing back against the failed Housing First approach. I urge you to spread the word to your friends. Share this video, because I think this video will provide people with an understanding in a very short manner, an understanding of the facts, the real drivers uh, that have led us to have a homeless crisis in California, and why it's only going to get worse if these same politicians who've led us down this failed path continue to apply these policies. We also need you to sign up at the website, cleanuparstreets.org, cleanuparstreets.org, and show your support for the People First Plan. Share that website, as well as kick, kick in a contribution if you can. We are entirely funded by the grassroots. If you don't live in California, be very, very careful. When you hear your politicians talk about housing first, know that it is a political agenda. It is not a homeless solution. Spread the word. Let's deal with homelessness in a compassionate way, but an accountable way. Let's clean up our streets. Thanks for watching. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and subscribe to my YouTube channel.